I was uh, born and raised Catholic. All my relatives were Catholic. I believed in God. That was my life. I was accepted to Salesian High School, which to me was an honor. Almost immediately after I got to the high school, I was befriended by the uh, vice principal, uh, Father Steve Whelan. The very first incident, I was playing pool and he masturbated in front of me. And I was scared to death. I stood there frozen. I was just a little 70 pound runt. I looked across the room and I thought, geez, I need some help. I thought, geez, I need some help. Some help. And Brother Sal Belanti was watching and enjoying it. And later I found out he was a serial molester rapist himself. When he got out of the PE to go into the showers, he would watch me. He would make comments about me undressing. And then he started calling me into his office and telling me uh, I was bad in class and what am I gonna do for him? And then he would attack me. He would stick his hands down my pants. He would, uh, he would just molest me. And then he would tell me if uh, anything happened, nobody would believe my word against the priest. Nobody would believe my word against the priest. And I believed him. This escalated. He started getting more violent and more rough. From 2004 to 2011, she was San Francisco Attorney General. She did not prosecute a single case of sexual abuse involving uh, Catholic Church priests. To put that in context of the 50 largest cities in America, all 50 of them prosecuted at least one case during that time period, except for Kamala Harris. And in addition to that, uh, she inherited from her predecessor, uh, Terence Hallinan, hundreds of pages of internal Catholic documents uh, that included the names of 40 current or recent priests who had been charged by parishioners uh, with molestation. Hallinan was using those documents to build criminal cases, and he was also planning to release them after redacting the names of victims. Uh, Kamala Harris um, actually deep six that document um, and froze those documents, and those documents disappeared disappeared, much to the chagrin of victims groups. I went with another victim to Terence Hallinan's office, the DA's office in San Francisco. 
and uh, we were introduced to Helen Ann and another a DA's assistant who told us they virtually had all these boxes about like a room full of files, like a room full of files uh, that they had gathered and collected and subpoenaed uh, from the Diocese of San Francisco on all these priests. Bishop Levada at that time was the highest ranking bishop in the United States. Then he became cardinal. So this was the top guy. This was the kingpin in the United States. And we had a champion here that was going to go after him. We thought, well, this is going to go somewhere. These guys are going to be punished. They're going to be held accountable. Uh, they're going to be prosecuted. Uh, they're going to be prosecuted. Before uh, Kamala Harris was elected, everything just went down the tubes. I started out by writing a letter asking for some help, for some help, for some help. For some uh, accessibility to the file, I didn't get any response. So then we made posters and started putting them all over the city, and we got no response. Several media members were also asking for files and stuff, and they were getting nothing. And uh, they were pestering her office, and then what they got was this uh, false statement that they were protecting victims. It's just a flat out insult. She could have redacted the names, uh, blacked out the names and left them out. Everything he did to gather information and to try and prosecute and go after them disappeared and went the other way. She shielded and protected them. Kamala Harris um, actually deep sixed that document. Hallinan was using those documents to build criminal cases, and he was also planning to release them after redacting the names of victims. Uh, Kamala Harris um, actually deep sixed that document. We will fight vigorously to remove every redaction and tell every story of abuse and expose every cover-up. While those redactions represent just a very small fraction of the predator priests named by this grand jury, no story of abuse is any less important than another. Today, Pennsylvanians can learn the extent of sexual abuse in these dioceses. And for the first time, we can begin to understand the systematic cover-up by church leaders that followed.
systematic cover-up by church leaders that followed. As the members of the grand jury wrote in their report, we need you to hear this. There have been other reports about child sex abuse within the Catholic Church, but never on this scale. For many of us, those earlier stories happened someplace else. Now we know the truth. It happened everywhere. Now we know the truth. It happened everywhere. It's a massive cover-up, and a lot of the people that financed her campaign to beat Hallinan uh, were law firms and lawyers and people connected to the church hierarchy who did not want that, uh, those documents to come out. The grand jury also found several instances where law enforcement let them down. Here's just one example. In the Diocese of Pittsburgh, District Attorney Robert Masters of Beaver County reported to church leadership concerned about an abuse investigation involving one of his priests that, quote, in order to prevent unfavorable publicity, he halted all investigations into incidents involving other young boys. Other young boys. District Attorney Masters actually testified to the grand jury that his reason for failing to investigate and prosecute the sexual abuse case against a priest was that he wanted the diocese support for his political career. A lot of the people that financed her campaign to beat Hallinan uh, were law firms and lawyers and people connected to the church hierarchy who did not want that uh, those documents to come out. The people that financed her campaign to beat Hallinan uh, were law firms and lawyers and people connected to the church hierarchy.
Almost immediately after I got to the high school, I was befriended by the uh, vice principal, uh, Father Steve Whelan. The very first incident, I was playing pool and he masturbated in front of me. And I was scared to death. I stood there frozen. I was just a little 70 pound runt. I looked across the room and I thought, geez, I need some help. And brother Sal Belanti was watching and enjoying it. Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congresswoman. From 2004 to 2011, she was San Francisco Attorney General. She did not prosecute a single case of sexual abuse involving uh, Catholic Church priests. Senator Harris, your response. As the elected Attorney General of California, I did the work of significantly reforming the criminal justice system of a state of 40 million people, which became a national model for the work that needs to be done. Senator Harris, your response. Members of the grand jury wrote in their report, we need you to hear this. There have been other reports about child sex abuse within the Catholic Church, but never on this scale. For many of us, those earlier stories happened someplace else. Now we know the truth. It happened everywhere. <laughs> 